let's take a look at the tools and gear I'll be using. Painter's tape, string winder. This is to uh, adjust the nuts around the posts and the tuners. Phillips head for the truss rod cover. Allen wrench with the truss rod. This I'll be using as a, a flat edge, straight edge, fret rocker, so to speak, even though it's officially not that. Uh, block of sandpaper. Yeah. Also, uh, bought a couple of these and I put double sided tape over here and cut out different grit sandpaper, which I labeled. Uh, another straight edge, uh, 5,000 grit cloth, 2,000 grit sponge, automotive store, you can get these. Uh, this is a, uh, you know, a, a rough stone, emery board, a file, another emery board. This is for the frets, uh, files, ones for the uh, nut slots primarily and for the uh, fret ends, perhaps. A couple of uh, pieces of polishing uh, materials in here, lemon oil and some polish. Uh, Vaseline for putting in the nut slots, a three-in-one oil, maybe I'll use that. I might, we'll just see, take it as it comes, come to the next row. Set of guitar strings, scissors of course, because I'm going to cut the box. We also like to cut the cellophane that these come into. <clears throat> So rather than having a lot of little pieces all over the place, I cut around the, the edge of the string of the cellophane. So a uh, pair of diagonals, another pair of pliers. This is for the string change. This is to stretch the strings. This is a glue stick because I'm going to take the sheet here that tells me what I did, you know, on what day, what day did I do what to what guitar. And I glue this on the back of this because I will cut this. I will cut out, cut this out, and I'll use the front of this and glue that on the back and put this in the guitar and put put that in the guitar case. This is to write with, of course. Uh, this is for the uh, bridge height. This is for the intonation. And I already laid out uh, two. There's two of these, as you can probably see that. Uh, two each is about, I don't know, 15 or 20 of them here. I think there's 18 here, just to get started. Before taking off the strings, please tape down your stop bar tailpiece and your bridge for guitars of this style. And let's clip the string as you take them off, I guess. The strings are removed. Let's check these nuts. Whoops, snug, 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 not tight. They're good from the factory, so far so good. It's nice to see that. Some guitar manufacturers just finger tighten these. Okay, good, good, good. And so on. While I'm, while I'm at it, I'm going to line up these holes so they're that angle see it's going this way we don't want that we want to turn this so it's like that we want to do the same thing for the other side when complete we want them to be again see how they're at the angle makes putting the strings in easier I'm noticing as I Go to take these out. They are, they're on here pretty firm. So I have heated up some wax. I'll be dipping these screws into that wax before I put them back in here. One thing about heating up the wax, you don't need it 100% liquid, just enough to get, you know, a couple of screws in there. You don't want to overheat this. This stuff starts steaming and it stinks and I wouldn't breathe it in because it's likely evaporating wax. I also found that that screwdriver is a little too small for this. So I'm switching over to a larger one. My preference is to have the screwdrivers magnetized. For 
for reasons like that. Since I've already played this guitar a bit, I'm going to determine that I'll need to tighten this just a, about a quarter turn or so. So that's what I've done to start off. I'll leave the truss rod cover off after I get the strings on so I can adjust the truss rod with string tension on. I've been taping up the fretboard and of course to protect the finish of the guitar because I'll be using abrasives on the frets. I don't want to hit the guitar so of course I made a cardboard template. Here's the result. Let's put this on here as a straight edge. I'm not saying this is scientifically accurate but it's close enough for rock and roll and there is a little I don't know if you can see that here. I'm sorry this is so out of focus. I keeps focusing on the mat instead of this. But there is a gap here, all along here, which, uh, you know, which means we have a little bit of a bow in the neck. So I'm going ahead and uh, give another turn to the truss rod. Okay, another quarter turn. Seem to have, seem to have done the trick here. Just a tiny little gap here. I'm using this as a fret rocker, and I like to do the frets in three places. One about here, same on the other side, and one in the middle. Sometimes frets are not down, but they're up in the air on one side of the guitar. And I haven't found anything that's outrageous. A little high here, a little high. So, that's good here. Third fret a little high. Second fret a hair high. You know, you can't really blame manufacturers uh, for this kind of thing, usually. Because um, you, know, you got to think of the, the conditions that these guitars get moved around in. The weather, for one thing. And, you know, probably sudden changes of temperature. And those handling, those handling the box, well, due respect, believe me, those people work very hard, these delivery guys. Um, but, you know, you can't help but, <laughs> you can't help but just, just moving the guitar around, uh, you know, moving the box around. You, any of those things can kind of have... What left the factory as, let's say, ideal, you know, maybe show up at a customer's home is not ideal. It might be a little less of an issue in a music store, because you would hope, again, I don't know, you would hope that somebody in the music store would, would notice something like that and maybe address it. So, at any rate, this is not too bad, but I'm going to polish the frets down anyway. I'll be using 320 uh, grit paper to begin with. All right, I've started it. I did 10 passes on each of these frets. You can know, already see that the tape is getting lighter. Um, now, I'm not pressing hard, and I'm just going to continue to do 10 passes on each fret. See? That's when you know you should stop. All right, I've given each fret 10 passes. Not too much nickel on the cloth. Shouldn't be. Uh, very moderate to light pressure, by the way. You don't want to dig in. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, just just light. And now I'll go on to... I, I think I'll just go on to the uh, 4,000 grit sponge right here. Whoop, 2,000 grit, pardon me. 2,000 grit sponge. Eh, a little heavy here. Okay, so now I'm doing 10 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'll continue down here. You notice how I'm not duplicating frets. And then finally. Okay, you know, cardboard comes in handy. 
Okay, now on to the 5,000 cloth. Right, so I can keep track of where I am. I'll just fold this over to a more workable length. And I did not use some of the other equipment I showed you in the beginning of the video. I kind of just have to have it ready just in case. This is really fine stuff. Now, it almost feels like a regular piece of cloth. Um, but gosh, don't get this near your finish of your guitar. I'm not really counting this. I'm just kind of going by a feel. Um, you can count them if you want to. It's fine. It's 5,000 grit. It's <laughs> barely going to take anything off. It's really just to give it a little, little shine, I guess. Here we go, perfect fit here. Um, I'm not recommending this, but I think some people, some players rub this on the back of their gloss laden necks. And that takes that off, not completely. It just roughs it up a little bit. So it takes the, uh, you know, the grippiness of that finish. It takes it away and it feels kind of like a natural piece of wood. How do I know this? Because <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> I actually wiped the back of a neck with this same cloth once and discovered that and went, uh oh, um, I don't know if I should do that. I mean, it did feel good, but what I then did is I, I just polished it uh, with some some uh, car wax uh, polish and it, it came right back up so it you know it whatever the this cloth did it it put it right back into the same condition it was before I used this cloth on there okay so let's see how it feels feels and looks good My fingernail on the edge boy that's glassy very nice that's what you want here we go. Let's check it now. Remember I said this one and this one seem to be high. Well, no more. No, not at all. Flat as a pancake. No, really good. Sometimes just doing, um, doing what I just showed you it just takes enough of the slight edge off things and that's enough to to get the job done now if that does not work after I string it up and I find that there's a low spot or yeah probably more of a high spot <laughs> with the frets then I will start to take some of the emery boards and other files that I have and start to use those and just rub in the area that needs it for example, sometimes you'll fret here on the sixth string, let's say, and the string is fine. But maybe on the high E string, it's fretting out. Now, if it is, that means that the next fret is the high one. So I, I would just, if that does happen, I would just address that one slight area. Little at a time, little at a time, little at a time until that disappears. Now, a lot of times, the next one will then act up. So you do that one. Probably you're going to find you're going to do this one less than this one until you kind of smooth them out. So that, that seems to work pretty good for me. So let's go on to the next step. Okay, while I have the strings off, I'm going to wipe off the headstock. It doesn't really need it, but I'm going to do it anyway. And then once I remove all the tape and the cardboard, I'll be uh, polishing the uh, top of the guitar. Before getting into polishing, just cut out another template. I'll tape this down here because I want to check the the slots here in the nut. Okay, I've taped this down and I started adding a few layers of tape here from previous jobs of doing this. I'm going to initially lay down about 14 strips of tape. Let's see how that works. I like to put the tape out first. I can just grab it and put it on. It's 14 layers here. This might be different for every guitar, depending upon the height of the fret. 
but as I've mentioned before in other other presentations, I liked him looking for something that I can use as a uh, straight edge here. Let me just use this truss rod cover. Okay. Right now, it seems to be even with the fret, the paper. Okay. So I'm going to put two more layers on here. All right. I actually added three more layers of tape here. Now I'm just going to take this off and put this up here against the nut. So when complete, it looks like this. So to protect the fretboard, I've double layered three widths, one, two, three, of painter's tape. Okay, I checked these. Let's take a look. These are like perfect for this. <laughs> I wanna see if there's a gap right over in here, this area. Here's the E string. Hope you can see this. There's no gap here. As a matter of fact, let me spare you some time. The only one that has a slight gap is the G string and a little bit on the D string. The other ones are fine. So I'll just uh, take you know one or two passes with one of the files and just lower it just a hair. All right, taking this file, here's what it looks like. And I am going to insert this here. Very, very, very little. Oh, hardly anything. And I want to angle it like that. And I want to do the same thing for the D-string D slot. And check these along the way. Because this is... These are really cut well, height-wise. So thank you very much to JSN. Maybe one or two. That's it. It'll be done in a second. Probably did no more than four passes with the file. And again, the B and the E are great. The G is good now. The D string, I did one, maybe two. They're all good now. I like to put the files that I use more more frequency in the opposite direction so I don't have to go hunting through them again the next time I want one. Now let's take off the film from the pickups and from the pick guard. Now I have left film on like this on white pick guards. <laughs> not a good idea. They will turn yellow. Uh, and it's just generally best to just take this stuff off. I don't, you know, I, I love the pro protectiveness of these things. Uh, but the reality is there's kind of a, some kind of glue in the back of these things or something. So some of you that might be in that business know what it is. And it seems to uh, have some kind of chemical uh, um, reaction with the pick guard plastic. So uh, that's what this says. Please take off the protective film before using. Okay, so let me take this off. And then we'll get into uh, wiping the guitar down. Okay, so to get good access, I'm going to take this tape off. And be careful now, because the stop bar will tend to just slide right off. See what I mean? So I want to take it off. And I want to do the same with the bridge. Now, remember which way your bridge goes. Before you do this, most guitars, nearly all of them that are this style, have the screws facing the bridge pickup. Not always the case. Putting on some polish. It has a little bit of pumice in it. And so this particular brand tells you to wipe it off before it dries. So that's what we're doing. I'm just giving this a once over. 
because this guitar is very clean. Very, very clean. Now, if I may add, because this guitar is not set up yet, so I don't mind these, you know, turning around and stuff, but if you like the way your action is set up and you want to take these parts off like I did to polish, you may want to just drape some tape over these, especially these on the bridge, uh, because as you move here, you will move these and it'll affect the adjustment. So if you like your adjustment, just put the tape there to prevent that from happening. All right, here's the result. This reminds me of a story. I was walking through a city one time and uh, <laughs> this limo driver had his car parked next to the sidewalk on the street, of course, and he was wiping his car off. <laughs> and I, I said to the guy as I walked past him, I said, oh, you missed a spot. <laughs> you should have seen his face. <laughs> I had to put my arms up right away and smile and just, hey, look, I'm only kidding, only kidding. But uh, you know how people do that. It is just really annoying. <laughs> you missed a spot. <laughs> yeah, happy motoring to you, too. Following polishing, I like to put a little lemon oil on the fretboard, which I've done. It's already disappeared usually gets absorbed into the uh, fretboard material. In this case, this is rosewood. Uh, you don't want to use a whole lot of it. Uh, you run the risk that it could absorb into the wood if you have a wooden fretboard, and maybe your frets might come a little loose, then you have a real problem. And uh, I did this kind of in reverse order. Really, I should have, should have, quote unquote, done the fret, done the lemon oil first, because sometimes the rag hits the pickup and and I have to go back and clean that. So uh, just really tiny, tiny thing. Uh, just a tiny, tiny thing. Do the lemon oil first and then do the polishing of the body. There's a little bit of fret sprout. Just a little bit. So while I, you know, look, I should have done this while I had the cardboard template on here. I'm not going to put that on again right now. What I'll do is just file to about here. I'll leave these sprouted, if you will, until the next time I uh, get the template on here. But, you know, but please don't do this without the template on here. It's really easy to scratch the <coughs> It's really easy to scratch your guitar otherwise. So what I'm going to use is this uh, nail file. Found it in the dollar store. Give them a plug and just rub the edges. I'm not pressing hard and be careful here because it comes up quick. So stop here and do this at, I am doing this at kind of a 45 degree angle I'm finding. And you wanna do the same thing for the other side. And again, just be careful down here. Now, if you have let's say a Gibson guitar, for example, and they have your binding up over the end of the fret, I would not do this. I would not do this. This guitar does not have that. So, um, I've never had to do this on a Gibson either, by the way. Maybe, maybe just look at the draw for me. Uh, but I, <laughs> I guess what, what I'm trying to say is I've never noticed any Real bad fret sprouting on uh, the Gibsons or even uh, Paul Reed Smith for that matter, the, you know, the more higher end guitars. Although I'm not certain, but I'm not sure if Paul Reed Smith does the uh, binding over the side of the fret. Very well might. I uh, apologize if you do and I, and I don't know it. I'm not going to go look at a Paul Reed Smith right now <laughs> to give you the correct answer. That's easy enough to do online. But, again, getting back to this guitar. This guitar doesn't have that, so it makes doing this easier. Doing it yourself easier. Very, very, I would say light to moderate. Let the file do the work. 
and it's taking taking some of the uh, the binding off, and that's okay. Now let's feel it. And I notice a difference already. Still a little rough, like this one's a little rough. But if that's the case, you could take your file and file and, and round these off. Okay, we could like to do them, you know, crown the end off. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. I may never do it. I don't know. Just depends. Just wipe things off, though. Okay. You probably want to do this uh, before you put lemon oil on the fretboard. I went a little bit out of order here because I found some issues after I did some steps. So the point is, after you take your tape off, leave your template on, then do the frets if, you, if they need to be done, uh, wipe everything off, then put the lemon oil on, then you can take your template off and polish the body or the face of the guitar. Okay, what I'm about to do now is not necessary, it's just a little extra. I have some petroleum jelly here. I don't want to put too much on here. I want to do the ends of the threads. And then I want to put, put it in here. Okay, not necessary to do this. But while I have these things apart, uh, I will do it. I'll do the same thing for bridge pins <clears throat> and I'll do the other one now to put the strings on I'm just keeping this tape here just to hold this in place I don't want to keep battling this falling apart or you know these falling out when I'm putting the strings on. I'm starting with the low E string. This is why we line the holes up. Now I'm gonna go back to the first fret. And then I start winding. And as I wind, I put some pressure on here so the coils go under the previous wrap. Oops, I almost forgot. Just before the strings get put on, I'm just going to fill the slots with some petroleum jelly. I'll wipe off the excess in a moment. Just a little touch. Not necessary, but again, while I have everything off, and all my equipment out, I'll do it. Okay, it sounds a little high, but it's low. But listen, I'm gonna just keep it where the tuner key, the key is up perpendicular because when I use the string winder, I don't wanna bang it around on the keys. So I'll tune this up to pitch once I get everything set up here okay i'm checking this because i want the 45 flat side of the 45 degree here against the post and then just clip it now i'm holding the camera with my other hand but normally i just hold the string with the other hand so it doesn't fly and see what i mean <laughs> they can fly really quite a distance all right so let me put the rest of the strings on and when i when i put strings on i like to go from this post up so now I'm going to do the E, then the B, and then the G string. I don't always remember to do that, but it's a lot easier because you don't have... If you put this string on first, and then this one, you know, you have that string kind of in the way, sort of. You know, this way it's all open all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, this is what I mean. You know, if you, if you do the strings, this pulse, these pulse, and then these pulse... You you have an open space in here. It's a little easier to put the. It, it gives you more room to navigate with the strings with the new string. 
Oh, all the strings are on. This is how they look wrapped around the post. Just so you can see that. Um, I did want to mention as well, before you clip the tail off, is to just yank it a bit. I take, I take a different kind of pair of pliers and I yank on that end uh, because sometimes there's slack that's built up in here. So it tightens it up, takes the slack out, and then I clip the string. Okay, now it's time to tune it up and uh, then see how the truss rod adjustment feels. As you can see here, the action is a mile high, and that is not the truss rod. Remember, we spun the bridge posts around when we were polishing? Well, now it's time. Now it's time to lower them. Now, these, most of the import guitars, you can do this with screwdriver. Uh, other guitars have a, you know, the thumb wheel. You can only, only use a thumb wheel because they don't have, they have like a kind of a rivet looking thing here instead of a screw, instead of the slot. So at any rate, let me lower this and I'll get back to you. This is a Fender Extra Heavy Pick. I've never found them in a store. I found them online and just bought a whole lot of them. And whatever the thickness of this pick is, seems to be where the height at the 12th fret is for me. I don't, I don't put the pick in and then adjust it. I adjust the guitar to just how it feels. And then I'll usually, you know, do, do a feeler gauge or pick this guitar pick in here. And I always, always find it's just about there on every guitar, almost every guitar. Now I like my action, uh, low and I like to use nines. Uh, some people like to use tens and have their action higher. Uh, they will get a better tone. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I'm a very light picker. If you're really aggressive, you know, you might want to consider uh, using, you know, those kinds of uh, specs. It's just me. Uh, over, over the years, I've actually played lighter uh, than I did when I was uh, a younger person. Uh, so whatever works, whatever works for you. This is why it takes, <laughs> oftentimes it takes years uh, because, you know, you know, it's probably not likely you're going to be changing the strings, uh, you know, a couple times a day to figure out what setup works for you. You're going to play it for a while, see how it feels. Some players get used to guitars that are hard to play, so to speak. They like the idea that the guitar fights them a little bit. Uh, I, I've been there. I've done that. Uh, I... Over the years, I've just developed into something that's, you know, more casual for me. Now, one thing I did forget, I forgot to oil uh, the bridge uh, or put, you know, Vaseline or 3-in-1. Not, not while this is on the guitar, you know, when it's off the guitar, uh, on the threads, uh, on, on the adjustment here. Uh, I just forgot it. it. It's not super, super necessary. It is nice because it does make these glide. Uh, a lot easier. Sometimes these screws get a little bit difficult to turn and you're in on a tight space like this. Uh, it was just my fault. So the next, what, I, what I'm going to do next, I'll do it off camera, is uh, intonate this guitar if it needs it. Generally with a, a change of gauge, uh, it's uh, good to check the intonation. Again, I went from 10s on here to 9s. Uh, so I expect the intonation to be off a little bit, but that doesn't always happen. Sometimes uh, it's just fine. Everything's different. Uh, that's why it takes time to learn these things. And I don't think there's too many shortcuts. Although having, you know, videos on, online uh, certainly does uh, help you save time. So hopefully this helped you out. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, just put them below. And I'll try to answer them if I can. Talk to you later. Take care.